All right, we're in the uh, we're in the pipe, pipe shop. the pipe shop at CB Fisk with Greg Bover, and we're going to talk about the casting of the pipes, which are made of lead tin alloys. Lead tin, lead tin alloys. Okay, so what, so why don't you take us through? Sure. Well, we start with uh, ingots. We call them pigs of lead and tin, and melt them in this cauldron. There's a gas fire. How, how heavy is it? Um, well, those are just little ones that are extra. Um, they come in 70-pound uh, pigs. That's 70 pounds? No, those are uh, ones that we cast ourselves from scrap. Oh, okay. Um, the, uh, the way they come, they come like this. And how much does that weigh? This weighs about 50 pounds. Can you bring it this way? Sure. Okay, that's 50 pounds. Wow. So we start with lead and tin. And we can put a thousand pounds in this furnace and melt it. So you wind up with a half ton of whatever alloy you want to make. So we make four or five different alloys, usually basically three alloys that we use most of the time, um, that are various proportions of lead and tin. And then we add antimony, bismuth, and uh, sometimes a few other trace elements to get the the alloys that we've found in historical pipe work. We've assayed pipes that are three and four hundred years old that have lasted well and we use those same alloys that the guys in Europe mostly used uh, centuries ago. Wow. So you melt the liquid metal here and you have, uh, as I say, about a thousand pounds. And then your camera is set up on a very long table that's actually three inches thick granite slab and it's covered with Nomex which is what firefighters and race drivers wear. It's a cloth that doesn't burn. Uh -huh. We have this uh, CDX on the top just for protecting it while we're not using it. Mm -hmm. But it's a cloth covered granite slab and the cloth is pulled tight by these springs and then both edges of the table are graphited because this sled is made to fit the table and it slides down the table like this. Uh huh. So what's on the sled? What do you, what? So you take the liquid metal and wearing protective clothing, uh, gloves and face shield and all that kind of stuff, you ladle the liquid metal out of the pot and into this tipping pot here. So it might take five or six scoops. A scoop will be 25 pounds. And you put it into the tipping pot. And then this is a three-person operation. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a dance for three people. <laughs> uh, so one person takes this high-temperature thermometer and sticks it in the liquid metal here. And you wait until it cools to exactly the right temperature. So you have it in the furnace, too hot, ladle it out, and it goes in the tipping pot, and you wait till it cools down. You can take pieces of the same alloy and stick them in here, just like ice cubes, and bring it down to the right temperature. Uh, right. And that temperature depends on the alloy, and it depends on the temperature of the air, and it depends on how long you've been casting because the table heats up too. So when it's the, just the right temperature, two people hold the sled and one person pours the liquid metal into the sled. Like this. So this sled is just a pine box and it doesn't have any bottom in it. Yep. And this uh, gate in the back is adjustable. So, just after you've poured the metal in, two people push the sled down the table and the liquid metal flows out underneath the gate in the back and leaves a pool of liquid metal on the table. So, the thickness of that pool of metal is determined by how much the gate is open and how fast you push the box. Huh. 
So we actually want the, tape, the sheets to be tapered because the pipes are thicker at the mouth than they are at the top. So you speed up as you go down the table. I gotcha. And you get a sheet that might be uh, two millimeters thick at this end and a millimeter and a half thick at the other end. This is really a craftsman's process. Oh yeah, this is an ancient <laughs> process. People have been casting metal this way for at least a thousand years. They used to cast on sand um, or packed sand or linen uh, was used sometimes. But um, so we use modern materials like the Nomex, but otherwise this is unchanged. Yeah, but I mean the person, the pe the, the three-person team that's doing this. Oh yeah. Are the guys? These yeah, guys. The guys are, who do this really know what they're doing. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So. You can vary the thickness of the metal by how fast you move. You have control of the alloy, um, everything. So that's why we do it ourselves, because then we get these sheets of metal. So you, you have this liquid pool of hot liquid metal on the table. If it's too hot, there's not enough surface tension and it runs off the sides, it makes an awful mess. <laughs> and if it's too cold, it solidifies before it gets out of the box and makes another kind of a mess. And in that case, you have to pick it all up, throw it back in the furnace, melt it again, and back, start going. Back to the drawing board. But if you do it right, you wind up with <clears throat> this beautiful sheet of metal, like this one. Uh, this is, this was cast a while back. It's uh, a 50-50 lead tin alloy that we use, similar to pewter, but not the same alloy. Um, and so this is what you wind up with, sheets of metal like this, that we store in rolls. And they're cataloged, so we know the thicknesses and the uh, alloy of every roll that we have. And there are dozens of rolls like this all around the shop. Wow. So then when the pipe makers want metal, they look at the catalog, they know which roll to go to to get the proper thickness and the proper alloy that they're looking for. Wow. There you go. And what are those uh, uh, on the back wall there? What, what are those things? Um, that is a testing, um, we call it a, a, a voicing jack. Mm -hmm. um, the rank in the back is for comparison and then when you're working on new pipes you take your new set of pipes and stick them all in here and then you can play them and adjust them make them work that's part of the voicing process so that's kind of a uh, so those are your mo are they, would you call them like models of no it's more like um, a standard yes. uh, and it's just for the pitch it's not for the other qualities of sound that the voicer is uh, working on. Fantastic. Thanks, Greg.